The 2014 Winter Olympics were declared open by President Vladimir Putin on February 7th. This is the most expensive Winter Olympics to date. Close to $50 billion are being spent on it. The opening ceremony was spectacular, showcasing modern Russia to the largest gathering of countries in the Winter Olympics ever. There was fog and clouds in the stadium, and five snowflakes suspended in a butician. It all came together beautifully. That is, by a small technical hiccup, one of the five snowflakes failed to convert into an Olympic ring, while the other four did so gracefully for the grand finish. It was beautiful nonetheless. I hope you watched the opening ceremony and plan to watch all the games. For 16 days in February, over 3,000 participants are in Sochi to play the 2014 Winter Games. There are 15 sports that are a combination of individual and team versions of a few main sports. But can you guess what all these sports have in common? No, they're not all held outdoors. Guess again. No, they're not all about going downhill as fast as you can. Guess again. Right, they all involve frozen water, in ice or snow. Coming to the actual sports, there are really only three main types of winter sports. Skating on ice, skiing on snow, and sledding on snow. Let's look at some of these in more detail. First, my favorite in the category of ice skating, figure skating. Figure skating is called that because ice skaters leave marks or figures on clean ice. Early skaters noticed that they could draw on ice, shapes like a circle or a figure eight. Some of the shapes are easy to understand, like the circle, but it takes practice and skill to make it perfectly round and end up exactly where you started. The Olympic skaters are so good that circles are too simple. They make complex and beautiful drawings in their competitions. So figure skaters draw figures on ice, but in addition to that, figure skaters can do tricks like spins and jumps. At the Olympics, skaters perform their special skating routines choreographed to music. It really is a treat to watch. Maybe you'll even get to see your favorite song interpreted by a figure skater. Next, if you like races, you will enjoy speed skating. The point of figure skating is grace and precision, but speed skating is pretty much just about speed, and that's why it's called speed skating. Form is important as long as it makes you go faster than the other skaters. Speed skating at the Olympics has different formats, such as short track and long track speed skating, but the purpose is pretty much the same, go faster than everybody else. And then there's curling. The sport of curling doesn't get started for a few days after the opening ceremony, but once it starts, it seems to keep going almost to the very end. So what is curling? No, it's not a game of hairstyling with irons. Actually, it's an old sport played on ice with rocks. Seriously, rocks. Granite rocks, actually. Does this sport feature breathtaking speeds? Uh, no. Does it involve outracing and outmuscling your opponent? Mm, no. So what makes it a sport? Well, there's a lot of skill in placing the stones to get the highest score, and there's a lot of strategy involved. The game is like shuffleboard on ice. Teams have to throw the rocks close to the target, and their teammates help by clearing and sweeping the ice around the target, so the stone comes closest to the target. The team with the largest number of stones closest to the target wins. That's it with the ice sports. Next, let's look at some snow sports. First, skiing freestyle. This is another sport that starts on the first day of the Olympics. Freestyle skiing is like regular skiing, but freestyle basically has no rules. The idea is to get to the bottom of the mountain as fast as you can without killing yourself or anybody else. There is no nicely groomed path. In places you don't even ski on the snow, you fly through the air. Sounds crazy, huh? The other favorites are alpine and cross-country skiing. Alpine skiing is just a fancy way of saying downhill skiing because that's what contestants do. They ski down a hill, a very steep hill. They go extremely fast. In fact, they can even go over 90 miles an hour. Imagine that without a seatbelt. Yikes. The point of alpine competition is to get to the finish line as fast as you can so skiers will be going as fast as their skill, their equipment, and the snow will allow. An interesting twist to the skiing events is the biathlon. The point of the biathlon is to ski cross-country over a long course, then stop at designated spots and shoot at targets that are at different distances. The skiers shoot either lying down or standing up. The winner is the fastest skier. But what about the most accurate shooter? Doesn't that count for more than just speed? Well, yes and no. The point is that at each shooting station, each shooter has to hit all five targets. If you miss, you have to ski a penalty loop for each missed target. 
so the winner is still determined by who finishes first. And my favorite skiing event, ski jumping. Also starting early in the Olympic Games schedule is the sport of ski jumping. The idea of ski jumping is to glide down a long and very steep ramp, then spring into the air and fly as far as you can. Because the skiers are going really, really fast, and because the ramp is pretty far from the ground, every skier who reaches the end of the ramp does some actual flying. If you've ever pretended you can fly, you'll want to watch these competitions. A new addition to the Olympic Games is snowboarding. Snowboarders can pretty much do anything skiers can do, like racing downhill on a groomed course in what is called a slalom, or doing tricks. Trick snowboarding is like freestyle skiing, but snowboarders call it slope style. There is even snowboard contests where four snowboarders compete at the same time to see who's fastest. Finally, let's look at sledding competitions. The most popular wintertime activity around the world is sledding. All it takes to sled down a hill covered with snow is something to slide on. That something can be a luge, where one or two people slide down the hill, feet first and face up on sleds with no steering and no brakes. Sounds like fun, huh? Luge riders can get up to 90 miles per hour. Naturally, the luger with the fastest time wins. Or you can sled down the hill, lying face down and going head first. The shape of this type of sled looks like a human skeleton, and that's why the event is called the skeleton. Or you can ride inside a bobsled. Europeans call it the bobsleigh. Just like the other sledding sports, the object is speed. Unlike the other two sledding events, bobslayers can steer, and they have brakes. They also ride in sleds that expose only their heads. Sounds a little scary. Players in the bobsled are moving back and forth to increase their team speed and viewers can see their helmets bobbing, hence the funny name. So, which one is your favorite sport? Watch the Olympics and let us know.